Zig Ziglar said, you know, when he was just aspiring to be a motivational speaker, he said he heard this man say, you are where you are because that's exactly where you chose to be. Hi, I'm Terry Savelle Foy, your cheerleader of dreams. Believe it or not, I'm actually recording this podcast on the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France. Like, we are here on the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> this is crazy. We just had lunch here overlooking the city of Paris. Talk about magnifique, magnificent. It's amazing. You know, I was just thinking about for our topic today, I want to talk to you about the three signs that you are going to be successful. You're going to succeed. And it made me think about just this trip, being here. You know, Saturday night I spoke at a church in Normandy, France. It was amazing. Afterwards they had this little garden party where everybody, you know, got together and just, I don't know, it was just so precious. All these French people thanking us for coming and caring about their nation. Well then Sunday morning, yesterday, I spoke for Hillsong Paris, two services. And then last night, my daughter and I, we were walking down the Seine River. We joined my team of women who come to help us, you know, impact this nation on the mission field. We had lunch or dinner at a beautiful little cafe, sitting outside, and we had ice cream, we had gelato, it was just so beautiful. Well, Cassidy and I were walking back last night, we're walking along the Seine River. It's Paris, you know, the city of lights. There's lights everywhere. You can see the Eiffel Tower all lit up. We went back to the apartment that we're renting this week. And as we're walking along the Seine River, my daughter says, Mama, thank you. Thank you for bringing me here. Thank you for the experiences that you give me. And it made me think about our topic today, about the three signs you're going to be successful. Because the number one sign, are you ready? It's to make a quality decision to take responsibility for your life. And the reason I'm bringing these two points together is because when Cassidy thanked me for bringing her to Paris, and she's been coming here every year since she was like nine years old, what she's really thanking me for is me taking responsibility for my life and making a decision to change. You know, in 2002, when I finally woke up and realized I'm separated from my husband. I'm in debt. I have no money in the bank after I've been working for 11 years. My house was a mess. I had no dreams or goals for my life. And at the time, she was five years old. So I am her role model for life, right? Well, when I made a quality decision in 2002 to take responsibility for where I was, that is what led us to today, being in Paris, getting the experiences that we have today. Here's what I want you to know. I heard T.D. Jake say, your decisions are like earthquakes. He said they have ripple effects. When you make a decision, it doesn't just affect your life, it affects those around you. Like my decision to go, okay, Terry, make some changes, get it together, get your debts paid off, get your body in shape, get your house cleaned up, get closer to God. That decision affected my daughter's life. Well. Zig Ziglar said, you know, when he was just aspiring to be a motivational speaker, he said he heard this man say, you are where you are because that's exactly where you chose to be. He said, I was broke, in debt, and down in the dumps. But he said it came through loud and clear that I was where I was and what I was because of me. And he started making decisions to turn his life around. Well, I just want to challenge you with that. Number one, make a quality decision to take responsibility for your life. Real quick, John F. Kennedy, you know, when he had that dream to build a rocket and take a man on the moon, land him on the moon and bring him back home, he asked Dr. Van Braun, he said, what will it take to build a rocket and to do this? And you know what his response was? The will to do it. When you have the will to make a decision, to make some changes in your life, I'm telling you, there's no stopping you. So number two, the second point I wanna bring up is you practice self-discipline behind the scenes. You know, there was a young guy who asked John Maxwell, because he went to his conference and he heard him speaking about leadership and developing teams and personal growth and all that. And he said, I wish I had a team. I wish I had a company or an organization to lead. He said, where do I start? Maxwell said, good question. Start with you. He said, you know, if you wouldn't even follow yourself, why would anyone else want to follow you? And then, you know, I've given this illustration before, but imagine a teenager wanting to shadow you 
and just learn about success and watch you from the moment you wake up until you go to bed? What would they observe about your daily habits, practicing self-discipline behind the scenes? Well, I love what Tony Robbins says. He says the best place to start is with the hour of power, 20 minutes of prayer, 20 minutes of reading, and 20 minutes of exercise. That's an amazing schedule. And if you can't start with 20 for each, start with 10 for each. Do something to invest in yourself. And then the third that I wrote down here, and I highly believe this, is you give honor where honor is due. So what I mean by that is if you work for somebody, be the kind of employee that you would wanna hire. That means you show up early, you keep your workspace neat, you look your best, you do more than what's expected, you speak highly of your employer, give honor where honor is due. If you have mentors in your life, honor them. Go to their conferences. If it's a minister, support the ministry, support the church. You know, do what you need to do to show honor. And then what I really want to emphasize is that you honor God. Two ways. You honor God with your time. You know, that means your prayer time where you say, you know what, I am not leaving the house without spending some time with God. Whether it's two minutes or 20 minutes. You talk to the Lord when you're driving. You talk to the Lord while you're, you know, loading the dishwasher. But you just make for sure you honor God with your time, that He has priority in your life. You know, it says in the Bible that He rewards those who diligently seek Him. And then the other way we honor God is with our finances. There's a scripture in Proverbs 3, 9, and it says, honor God with your wealth. So be generous. You know, God responds to generosity. You wanna see your finances increase? Be generous, be a giver, honor God with your wealth. So those are the three areas. Number one, you make a quality decision to take responsibility for where you are today. Number two, you practice self-discipline behind the scenes with nobody watching. You know, you're not doing it so everybody says, wow, you're amazing, look what you do before you even go to work. No, this is between you and God. You're just faithful to keep your commitments. And number three, you honor God with your time and with your wealth. So from Paris, France, I just want you to know I'm cheering you on. Oh, and real quick, I want to give you something to just kind of help you out. We're giving you a free download from a chapter of my latest book called The Five Things Successful People Do Before 8 a.m., giving you a complete chapter called Stop Killing Time, because I want you to identify ways you could be wasting time so that we just make a few course corrections. So anyway, get access to that. Just click the link in the description there so you can get your chapter absolutely free. Thank you for watching me from Paris, from the Eiffel Tower, au revoir.